So today in front of you, I want you to put the Qur'an to the test using a scientific method. Using the scientific method, you have to have a hypothesis. My hypothesis that I'm going to put in front of you today is the Qur'an is of divine source. It could not, it possibly have been written by a, name, by a man named Muhammad or anybody around him in the time period where it was revealed to him. At that time, in the Arabian desert, a man who was illiterate, and even if he could read, he didn't have the libraries of the Greeks or the Romans or, or any of that kind of research in front of him to be able to read. Nobody around him could have known the scientific facts that are mentioned in the Qur'an. This is my hypothesis. Let's put it to the test today in front of us. If we can test this theory against available facts, available information that we have scientifically today, and if we can prove it that repeatedly it would come true, then we have to agree that this is a fact that this book is of divine origins. So we look at scientific research in astronomy. What is the origin of the universe, the galaxy, the planets? Today, the accepted theory today is called the nebular hypothesis. And according to this, the sun and the planets in our solar system began as a giant cloud of smoke. And then it came together as bodies, for example, planets and solar systems and galaxies. This theory was proposed by Emanuel Swedenborg. And then Immanuel Kant, in 1755, he published this. 1,100 years, 1,100 years before them, the Qur'an, it stated, ثُمَّ اِسْتَوَىٰ إِلَى السَّمَاءَ وَهِيَ دُخَانٌ What is the Qur'an? And I'm going to give you the chapter and verse numbers so you can look it up yourself. In the 41st chapter, in the 11th verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He directed Himself towards this, the heavens and there were smoke. So how could a man in a desert who was illiterate and had no literature, no scientific evidence, no scientific works around him, no scientists around him, no scientific research going on in a desert, have known that. 1100 years before people like Immanuel Kant with all their scientific research and books and libraries working on the works of other scientists came up with this. You may say, okay, he guessed. It was a lucky guess. Okay, let's put that to the test. The sun and the moon, they move in an orbit. How do we know that? Galileo in 1632, he used his invention, the telescope, to look and prove that the sun and the moon, they have an orbit, and they move in that orbit. But over a thousand years before Galileo, with no telescope, and no ability to have any scientific work in front of him, how could a man named Muhammad, peace be upon him, in a desert, have known that? But in the Qur'an, in the 21st chapter, 33rd verse, it says, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ كُلُّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the Qur'an? In the 21st chapter, 33rd verse, He says, And he, it is He who created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, each traveling in an orbit. The first scientific fact that it shows is that the, the movement of the sun and the moon and the earth, it makes the, the, the movement of the day and the night. A man named Muhammad could not have known that. And on top of that, to say that the sun and the moon are both moving in an orbit, there is no way a man a thousand years before Galileo, without a telescope, without any research in front of him, could have known that. But this is in the Qur'an as well. Okay, another lucky guess. Alright, let's keep going. In 1580, Sir Francis Drake, he circumnavigated the earth to demonstrate that it was round and not flat. He went all around the world to show that it was round. Even today, some people think it's flat. But this is something, having the ability to go in a ship around the world was able to prove that. A thousand years before him, a man in a desert that never set sail in the oceans, that had no ability to know any of this, he brought forward a Qur'an that was revealed by the Creator that told us that the earth is not only round, but like the egg of an ostrich, a spheroid, which is more accurate than to say the world is round. Because the poles, it's squished like the egg of an ostrich. How could he have known that? But in the Qur'an, you will find it. And this was a thousand years before Sir Francis Drake by a man who never set sail into an ocean. Not just that. You may say, okay, these are, a lot of these are intelligent guesses. Okay, the Big Bang Theory, which is accepted theory today, in the Qur'an, chapter 21, verse 30. 
The light of the moon is, doesn't, doesn't come from itself, but it's reflected from the sun. How could a man named Muhammad have known that in a desert? Peace be upon him. But the Qur'an, it revealed it, chapter 25, verse 61. That all of the, the sun and everything there will extinguish after a certain period of time. The light of the sun will finish. It, 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 will, it will become a supernova and be destroyed. This is what the scientists tell us today in the Qur'an. This was mentioned in chapter 36, verse 38. The presence of interstellar matter, something that, that there is no way a man in a desert couldn't read, have, would have known about in the Quran, chapter 25, verse 59. The universe is expanding. How could a man named Muhammad have known that in a desert? No, no universities around him, no scientific research going on. He couldn't even, even if you put a book in front of him, he couldn't read. But in the Quran, in, verse, in chapter 51, verse 47, it mentioned the expansion of the universe, something that we take as a scientific fact today. Not just these, if we look at geology, the origins of iron. Iron is an element we find, but as scientists tell us that iron is not made on earth, rather it is made inside super red giants. The stars that are red super giants, that's where iron is made and it comes from the sky and it is brought down to the earth with the meteorites and others hitting their planet. And that's where it came from. That's what scientists, they tell us today. The Qur'an, it told us this in chapter 57, verse 25. Physics, if we look at scientists, they recently discovered the Higgs boson particle, which is smaller than an atom. Recently, we found that this is smaller than an atom. And before that, by looking at the atom and the nuclei and the protons, we saw something smaller than an atom. But a man named Muhammad in a desert could not have, he didn't have a telescope, he didn't have any of that ability. P Dr. Peter Higgs, uh, he got a Nobel Prize for this discovery. But over 1400 years before him, the Qur'an, it mentioned that that which is smaller than an atom. And this is in, in chapter 34, verse number 3. We look at biology. NASA in JPL, the Jet uh, Propulsion Laboratory that they have, in Pasadena, California, they published a paper, and this was recently published, April 15, 2014, talking about the water world theory, the life's origins, it all came from the water. Talked about the electric energy naturally produced at the sea floor, that that's what gave rise to life. And the fact that 80% of cryptoplasma, which is what cells are made of, is all water, 80% water. Me and you were made 80% of water. But 1400 years before NASA, without the JPL lab, without any of that research, the Qur'an, it told us, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ What did the Qur'an tell us? It tells us that in chapter number 41, verse number 11, that we made, Allah says, we made the, every living thing from water. And then He puts a challenge, will you then not believe? After looking at these, all of these scientific miracles, and we're going to give you a link in the description to the book, the, the Bible, the Quran and Science by Dr. Miris Burkai, and other books that will show hundreds of scientific facts that are taken as fact, that are mentioned in the Quran, and not a single prediction in the Quran is wrong. How could it be that this is accepted through divine source? A man in a desert could get one guess or two or three, but not every time. So I invite you to read the Quran yourself, to ask questions. In the, in the description, we have a link. You can send us questions. Don't spend your life without knowing the truth of where you came from and what your purpose is, as mentioned clearly in the Quran. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا